Hello and welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Podcast Angry Hoffmeyer. And joining me is a man that has an arsenal because he's out for vengeance because he doesn't just trust anybody because it's a doggy dog world. He's also a runner who makes sure to pay the ghosts unless they have a rage and he hates the dying of the light because then there's frozen ground. It's Jay Cluett. Hello, I'm feeling Bangkok dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know why we're here today, Jay, for this very special I... bonus episode. We are here to talk about when whether or not Nick Cage has cold arms in different films. <laughs> So we were recording an episode with uh, Conair of Conair the podcast, and we had the guys from the Titanic Mi- Minute on podcast, a free podcast on, and we started talking about Nicolas Cage's sleeveless shirts roles, like the mythical sleeveless shirt Nick Cage, <laughs> and we started like talking about his movies where he has sleeveless shirts, and I went, you know what, I'm gonna watch like a hundred of his movies, I'm gonna go to every library, find every streaming site, hello Tubi. Find everything I can. I'm going to zap, zap through his... Well, you can't really. I'm going to watch his movies, and I'm going to see which ones he wears a sleeve of shirt in. So I started doing that for about 20 movies. But then I went, gee, he wears leather jackets a lot. And then I went, wow, he's always in suits. And then I went, whoa. Got into Chris Walken there for a second. Uh, hey! Um, <laughs> uh, I got to have more cowbell. Uh, but then he said... But then I also noticed in his late career run that he's been, like, Henley heavy. So I just went back and rewatched the 20... And then I went through all, I got a hundred in the list. I got a hundred Nick Cage movies in the list and it's crazy. Like, so I, I I was looking for instances of like sleeveless shirts and Henleys. And if he wears all four, four, I log them. If he wears three, I log them. If he wears two, I log them. But it's kind of crazy because like in Looking Glass and Joe, it's like a blink and you'll miss it sleeveless shirt moments. So I, I really had to scour these things. And now I've watched all of them, Jay. I've watched all of nick cage's movies we need to be very careful what conversations we have in the future on these podcasts because this has been a huge endeavor off of the back of just one kind of impromptu conversation about a sleeveless shirt that has yet to appear in the film where we're up to talking about it <laughs> i've been waking up at 4 30 a.m because uh, i get my daughter up at seven and so i'll get up early i'll put on some, like a nick cage movie like if it's world trade center he's stuck under rubble for seven hours and there's only a couple that's, that's a fast forward yeah, there's only a, yeah. but you know what there's ghosts not ghost moments but maria bello is walking around and she sees him in her like she's daydreaming and sees him so you have to be careful because there's there's a flannel moment with him in there uh, you know and like so, other other movies like snowed in you can fast forward through pretty quick there are if, movies if, like if maria adaptation, bello were to if Marie Bella were to stop at a photograph, pick it up and look at it, and in the photo, Nick Cage was wearing a sleeveless shirt, would that count? Yes, because he's okay. wearing a sleeveless shirt in the movie. It, be, okay. it He's there without sleeves. I included it. So okay. I just thought, you know what? Let's, let's roll. Let's, let's roll with it. Like, let's, let's do it. And, you know, like the Cotton Club, you can fast forward. Like, he's not in every scene of Birdie. He's not in every scene in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. But it's crazy. He's in very few scenes of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. But he's in the background of the Fast, fast Times at Ridgemont High wearing a suit coat, which puts him in the suit category. So you really had to watch. Like, this isn't one of those where you can just look at some pictures on Google. You know the way I work, man. I just – I went through all of these movies and pulled the data. And we were kind of right. We – I think – when we talked about it with everybody on the show, there's five of us on that episode. We kind of talked about mythical Nick Cage tank top. And he has the highest IMDb average, which is a 6.12, which is good. 6.12 for IMDb for all of his movies where he wears a sleeveless t-shirt. Oh, actually, let me start. So his overall IMDb user score for all of his movies is 5.89. And his Rotten Tomatoes average is 48.6, which is rotten. And the worldwide box office for all of his movies is 102 million. So those are the base levels. Uh, the INDB user score is below six. The Rotten Tomato score is rotten, and he's just over 100 million. But like sleeveless T-shirts, he's 6.12 for IMDb and 54.9 for Rotten Tomatoes. So I mean, and also when you look at his theatrical release movies where he wears a sleeveless shirt, it's 62.5. So, I mean, okay. that's pretty good. And the theatrical release average for the movies where he wears a sleeveless shirt, that's 6.58. So, theatrically released 
Nick Cage tank top, that mythical bean has the highest audience and critic scores out there. And you're you're counting uh, the animated sleepless. It's not really a shirt. Uh, the the kind of toga kind of thing in the crudes. Yeah, I mean he's sleeveless. Yeah. Uh, you know, in in uh, what Spider Verse, he's fully clothed. So I just fully, I gave yeah, yeah, yeah so he's I, very all of the clothes in that. So I gave you know he goes in in uh, the other category because I had four categories and a other because there's some movies where he just wears t-shirts or in Bringing Out the Dead he's wearing his EMT outfit and Left Behind he's wearing his pilot uniform which is a suit but it's also a uniform so I'm not counting that. Uh, You're not counting that as a suit. No, because it's a pilot's uniform. Okay, well, this is, I, I meant to say this before we recorded, you've got Con Air in the suits category. Yeah, because when he's in uh, court. Oh, he's in court. You're yeah. right. My mistake. See, that's why you've got to watch all these. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Like, uh, hey, that made me very happy because I'm going to get questions like that. And I'm like, not in this scene. <laughs> uh, <laughs> watch it. But yeah, uh, so yeah, he's in a suit in that moment. And let me read off his, his, um, sleeveless shirt movies it's valley girl birdie which birdie's an interesting one and it's on tubi and i recommend watching it racing with the moon which is like rip nick cage like the boy in blue he plays a canadian rower who wants to break the world record but he's also a troublemaker like this is like pete cage in shape raising arizona moonstruck by the rules yeah moon moonstruck firebirds wild at heart deadfall red rock west kiss of death con air eight millimeter Captain Cor Corelli's Mandolin, Bangkok Dangerous, The Crudes, Joe, Between Worlds, Looking Glass, A Score to Settle, The Crudes 2, and The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. So w which, this isn't what we're looking at here, but what is the most he's in a sleeper shirt? Just uh, just by memory. I know you didn't like take a stopwatch to it, but can you remember when you think of Nick Cage in a sleeper shirt, which is the film that's like, yeah, that... That's the pinnacle of the sleeveless. I mean, based on just being iconic, it's Con Air. Yeah. Because that's what everybody sees. But, I mean, in Boy in Blue, he's always sleeveless. He's always rowing. In The Crudes 2, he never has sleeves. That's Joe, true. Yeah. when I think about Joe, there's only one sleeveless scene. The rest of he's in flannel. So when, when you close your eyes and you think, I, I think the things that come up first in my mind are Con Air, Moonstruck, and Raising Arizona. And maybe, if you know it, Kiss of Death. So those okay. are my four movies where it's like super tank top heavy. And, I mean, they're okay. good movies. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is, man. You put him in a sleeveless shirt. But, I mean, if he's in a, um, a suit, his average is 6.04, and his Rotten Tomatoes average is 48.2. So that's so, lower than if it is with, like, a... Um, that's lower than I, uh, the IMDb and Rotten Tomato average of the sleeveless T-shirt. So put him in a suit, not good. Do you reckon that's to do with like public persona? When people think of Nick Cage, they think of him as uh, a more a, a lower status character. Where they like they, yeah, the classic yeah. the classic diehard thing of yes. Bruce Willis is wearing a a sleeveless shirt. He's a, a low status character, Hans Gruber, high status wearing a suit. So I reckon Nick Cage, to me, he, he can play higher status, but he's he just kind of fits more in that lower status role in the Cameron pose of the world. Think about that. That makes more sense to me. He's been nominated for two Oscars, and he won one. And in those movies, he played screenwriters. So he's both he's a screenwriter in Las Vegas and a screenwriter in Adaptation. However, he gets fired from his job. He gets a, like a, a hefty severance payment, and he goes to Vegas and just wears suits and is plastered and terrible looking the entire time. Like he's dying. An adaptation. Yeah. He's just incredibly schlubby. He's just he's not he's not suited up. He's not George Clooney, Ocean's Eleven at all. He is a screenwriter who is just a total schlub. An unbearable weight of massive talent. He's on the downslope of his career. His kid doesn't <laughs> like him. So, yeah, I think you are absolutely right. Like, look at Mandy. Look at his best movies recently with, like, Mandy and uh, Joe. Oh, no, Raising Arizona. Yeah, That's Raising very, Arizona. Like, status character. Yeah. like, Moonstruck, he has a bakery, but, it, you know, he's not incre incredibly wealthy. So, yeah, I think people really do like – like, in The Runner. I was watching The Runner, and I'm like, ugh, like, you're not a senator, dude. Um, so, you know, that, have you seen the cast for The Runner? 
That's like one of no. those stacked. Let me let me read. Wait, this is stack. that the? I'm not even sure which one that is. Is that Justin Timberlake? N- Wait, the run? No, that's Runner Runner with Ben Affleck. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> the Runner, Nick Cage. It's called, and he just yeah, let's see, 2015 film. Oh, but in okay. this movie, Sarah Paulson, Peter Fonda, Connie Nielsen, Wendell Pierce. Like you have like a big big names in this movie. And those like, are some great actors, yeah. Yeah, but he's just all I don't know. And like Pig, he's a disgraced chef. So yeah, I think he's definitely best when he is kind of raising Arizona esque or leaving Las Vegas where he's just on the <laughs> he's he's going down. Um <laughs> I mean, face-off people love, and he's all suited up in that, but he's a criminal. Like, he's a maniac. Um, it's... I, I, I feel like face-off is always going to be outside of any kind. It's always going to be an, an anomaly because, because of, like, he's playing the bad guy and the good guy <laughs> and a psychopath and a, <laughs> an FBI agent. And uh, there's a magnetic prison in the middle of the ocean. That film <laughs> follows no rules. <laughs> it's uncategorizable. No, that's a perfect thing to say. Like, you can't put him in any box in that movie. And then I've, I, so I know a lot of people might be asking questions. So I put, I, I did some more, I did so much digging on here and I put movies where he wears only one of the items. So I have four, five categories, wait, four categories, but if he only wears one, like if he only wears a leather jacket and like a t-shirt, I only count it as one category. So that's 52.8. But if he mixes a leather jacket with like a suit that jumps down to 47.1. And if he wears <laughs> three of those items, it drops down to 39.8. But if he wears all four, like an eight millimeter, it's 23%. So not no good. And if you're going to blend, you should do sleeveless t-shirt and a suit, Raised in Arizona, Con Air, Moonstruck. Those movies feature him wearing a suit coat and sleeveless t-shirts. Because that's, that's, that's like the greatest arc between the two kind of uh, uh, wardrobes, isn't it? Where like somebody in a suit is like the, the high, the high low status kind of thing. They're doing well, they're successful, they're in a position of power or a serious scenario then sleeveless that's a completely different world you know things have changed there's been a dramatic turn of events between these two things so i think that's like the biggest change between characters it going from like a leather jacket to a sleeveless that's just taking the jacket off Whoa, that could be the same yeah. day you know that's the yeah. same journey even mm-hmm. just a little bit warm i mean like there's always a dress shirt in between the <laughs> sleeveless tank the <laughs> sleeveless uh you know what tank top and yeah. the suit coat and yeah no, i i, I, love I do like that the henley is the worst reviewed uh it, it gets all the worst results when he's wearing a henley uh, because I, I i don't own the henley's i wasn't even aware of what it was before we recorded our episode on primal <laughs> recently on which he's wearing a henley throughout i think uh, you, you sent me like four screenshots of Nick Cage wearing Henleys in various films. I think he looks very bad in a Henley. I think he looks awful. <laughs> uh, it's just it's just not a shirt style that suits him, and that is reflected in the audience scores <laughs> of of his films. Yeah, and that's a great point. And like, yeah, he does not really rock the Henley well. And listen, I'm a big fan of the Henley. I used to be a fan of V-necks and Henleys. Like I hated things that were like tight on my throat. <laughs> I have nothing against them. Uh, it's just on Nick Cage, they are not right. But you know what's crazy? When he b- blends a Henley with a sleeveless t-shirt, the tomato meter score drops down to 16% for the movies where that happens. It's just not right. People can't handle it. <laughs> they can't handle it. They, like, they refuse. Henley. They will not. <laughs> like They just can't handle like a sleeveless tee and a Henley. The best combination is a Henley and a suit. So if, if you're going to Henley Nick Cage, make sure he's wearing a suit in the movie as well. But but do not have a suit over a Henley. No. That, no. That would look crazy. <laughs> that would be just bizarre, especially with a tie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I got a, I got a question for you. So okay. let's go through his filmography. And so we, we kind of just like Con Air is what we think of when we think of sleeveless tees, correct? Yes. All right. So what about him in a suit? Like, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Like, close uh, your eyes. Cage in a suit. I, I mean, I haven't seen it, but I think it's The Wicker Man. Oh, yeah. Because he's a lot of running around in a suit from what I, from like the clips I've seen. I, mean, I don't mean a bear suit. I mean an actual formal suit. Oh, he's in a suit a lot. So much suit work in it. Uh, I guess I, I went, where did I go? I went straight, when I closed my eyes and I, I went straight to Snake Eyes because of that suit 
because I bought the movie because I couldn't find it online. I didn't want to rent it for four, so I bought it for five bucks. And then I scanned through it. I always thought he wore a leather jacket, but it's just a really shiny suit, and he's wearing it for most of the movie. So that I mean, was the I've watched thing. that fairly recently. I, I've recorded it being like a snake skin. Yeah, jacket. it's not. <laughs> it's just shiny. I had to bring my wife over and be like, Megan, is this a suit or is that just shiny? And she's like, no, it's a shiny suit. It's not a leather jacket. All right, now let's go to leather jacket. I think this one's pretty easy. That's it's got to be gone in sixty seconds. Yeah, yeah. Which a film I adore. The, the leather jacket that is a character in the movie. He's a little tired, a little wired. I think I deserve a little appreciation. <laughs> it's my favorite Nick Cage quote. Oh man! And then what about what about Henley? Is it are you just Primal? It's good. I think I've only seen him in in in, in Primal. Uh, again, which he looks awful in, and the image they used on the box for Primal uh, is a reason why nobody saw that film <laughs> because it's, he just looks terrible in it. Yeah, it's uh, I don't I don't. They're just like it's put a just put a Henley on him. It's fine. Just just don't put him on the cover. Just put his face on there and I don't believe albino jaguar whatever it was whoa <laughs> put kevin durand but put yes directed by the guy who uh, was helped film <laughs> rrr directed by this guy who you will see in uh four years time <laughs> <laughs> and then uh a couple other things i know i'm blasting through this but i'm so excited to finally talk to somebody about this jay <laughs> but yeah i went through and i put which kind of clothing is featured most like, in his highest ranked film so in his highest ranked films, it's Into the Spider Verse, Red Rock West, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, Pig, Moonstruck, Face Off, Adaptation, Leaving Las Vegas, Teen Titans, Raising Arizona, Mandy, An Unbearable Way to Mass Talent, Joe, Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans, Peggy Sue Got Married and Colored Out of Space. And okay. in that category, in those movies, he wears one, two, three, four, five, five sleeveless shirts. But wait, actually, I should do the numbers here. I should tell people things. People are, I'm pinballing, whatever. So that and, we'll see. And, let's see. You got Red Rock West, Moonstruck, Raising Arizona, Unbearable White Mass of Talent, and Job for the sleeveless ones of the of those top ones. And he has 22 sleeveless shirt movies. And then w when he has suit movies, he has 55. So then when you go down and you look at which of these top rated movies he wears a suit in, you have one, two, three. You have Moonstruck, Face Off, Adaptation, Leaving Las Vegas, Raising Arizona, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, Bad Lieutenant, and Peggy Sue Got Married. But yeah, if, okay. even if you did the math, like the percentage is still higher for that the sleeveless shirt. So like a higher percentage of sleeveless shirt movies are in his top ranked films because there's less than half of them than there is suit movies. So percentage wise, sleeveless shirts are in his highest ranked films the most. Makes but, sense to me. And then I went and I did all of his IMDb averages. And then the same thing's true for that. I mean, there's just so many, like, you know, there's a good, a suit has a great presence. There's only three leather jackets, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, I mean, once again, sleeveless shirts have a higher percentage of appearing in his top IMDb movies. Did you look at the box office? I did. And then, <laughs> so I did that and he, and he has sleeveless shirts in one, two, three of those, which is Crude's. Con Air includes two, but then he okay, wears a suit sense. in Sorcerer's Apprentice, Con Air, Gone in 60 Seconds, Face Off, National Treasure, The Rock, and National Treasure 2. So there's a large suit presence in there. There's only one leather jacket, which is, no, there's three leather jackets, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Gone in 60 Seconds, and Face Off. Oh, and Ghost Rider. Oh, yeah, and Ghost Rider. I, oh, yeah, because he, he just wears a leather jacket in that. He very rarely, <laughs> he wears like t-shirts. He's never like sleeveless. And, I mean, you're mainly focusing on the skull that's on fire. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, no of, leather jacket. It so, distracts away from the rest of the ensemble. I mean, to be fair, the the highest average of like if you put them in a leather jacket, those movies average the most money at the box office. They average 99 million, whereas suits only average 94 million. Raise uh, uh, sleeveless tees only average 90, uh, 89 million. So his leather jacket movies average the most money at the worldwide box office. So I guess if you want to make money, stuff them in a leather jacket. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah. I mean, leather jacket is is generally considered pretty cool. <laughs> clothing. <laughs> as clothing goes, leather jacket is generally considered as cool. I don't think I'm breaking any ground, ground by saying that. No, I just uh, love it. It's, it's true. I mean, as somebody who has never even put on a leather jacket, let alone owned one, like, it's, it's it's not something I could pull off. I'm not Nicolas Cage, but he certainly can. 
in numerous colors. Yeah, I mean, he looks great in, in a leather jacket. He really does. I'm uh, almost reluctant to suggest this, but I feel like the element of this that we're missing is is how his hair affects these things. So, because oh, that's... sorry to cut you off. My bad. No, because no. well, because like Cage is known for having wild haircuts. Uh, I'm just intrigued as to whether long hair, whether the combination of like leather jacket, long hair, leather jacket, short hair, uh, sleeveless tee, mullet, uh, uh, Henley, uh, bald. Has he been bald in any films? He's done a shaved head at some point. I'm just intrigued as to whether how how the hair affects things. Does having a mustache affect things? Uh, yeah, I went through all that as well, uh, but I just didn't want to go insane. <laughs> pulling every stat because i was like maybe i should go through and do because in in um the trust he has a mustache and but i also notice people really go after his hair in movies so i kind of wanted to avoid that and I, I i've always wanted to maybe count his freakouts, but i felt like that might be exploitative too so you know me man i i just went for the weirdest thing possible yeah, you don't you don't take the the road most traveled. The hair would be the obvious choice. I feel silly for bringing it up. No, but I'm you're sorry. right though, because that was what crossed my mind. But then I was like, how do I like normal hair, long hair? Like, how do you how do you gauge? Okay. He's never hair? had normal hair. What are you talking about? Well, early in his career, <laughs> I would say, has he? Well, I mean, eight millimeter. I mean, there the, there are very few haircuts that I think you could lift off of Nick Cage, put on another person, and not give them a second look as you walk past them on the street. <laughs> it's, it's something about the combination of kind of the the length, the uh, kind of the hairline, the spikiness of it sometimes. I don't know. It's it's something I love about Cage is, is the different haircuts in his films. So. In Kiss of Death, he has very short hair. In which one? Kiss of Death, where he's all okay. beefy. I haven't seen that one yet. That's, that's on my list. I need yeah, to get so... to it. He, I mean, I guess that's probably his shortest hair now that I'm looking through here. Man, let's see, Deadfall. I mean, oh it's gosh. it's pretty short in Gone in sixty seconds. It's pretty, it's it's not too long in that one. Guarding Tess, he's a he's um, what's the word? Secret Service. So he yeah, has very be, short cropped hair. That would make sense. But yeah, and again, we're we're coming from from Con Air, where the hair is legendary. So can I? <laughs> Okay, can I run through my five favorite Cage performances? Please. This is going to be tough, Jay. How many of them are Cameron Poe? <laughs> He's in top five. You okay. know, you know. before we started this podcast, I might not have put him in the top five, just because of recency bias. But okay. watching what he does in Con Air and the way that he, he adds so much to Cameron Poe. Like the physicality, he's super sassy. What was I thinking? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> just admiring your cage. You're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, um, okay, in, in no order. Raising Arizona, Pig, Leaving Las Vegas. All right, I have three. Those are three. Those are the like. Now this is where I get. See, there's a hundred movies, so you're really. I love him in Kick Ass, but I can't add that. I'm gonna go Con Air because he he, he does things. Also in Prisoner of, uh, Prisoners of Ghostland, there's a scene where his testicles blow up and he's like, my testicle! <laughs> and it is, you know, no one talked about that last year. That, because, that is the only fact I know about that film because you talk about it all the time. But like, you know he had a great year when nobody, when that didn't become a thing. Does that make, you, you know what I mean? Okay. But when I eventually see that film, I'm just going to start waiting for his testicle to explode. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen at some point. Uh, okay, so I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say Raising Arizona, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say Moonstruck because that's Cher's movie. <sighs> okay, this is Valley Girl. I like him a lot. He guarding no, Kiss of Death. I mean, okay, so there's a few that immediately come to mind. It's Face Off. It's oh, Adaptation. I can't. Yeah, that's my fifth Adaptation. Yeah, that's that's the one I'd written down as being. Where is this on your list? <laughs> but I, I knew you'd get that. I knew yeah. you'd get that, but. I just... Yeah, that has to be there. I mean, so six, so that that means I said leaving Las Vegas, adaptation, pig, raising Arizona, and Con Air. Yeah. That's pretty good. I think my list, I might kick off raising Arizona and replace it with Face Off, just because I, 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 I get some stick for this, but raising Arizona, not my favorite film. 
uh, I, I like it, but it's it's down there in the Cohen rankings for me. Oh, uh, we should do an episode like our Pixar episode where we do Cohen brothers. <laughs> I'd love to. I've seen one of the films apart from the uh, Macbeth. People lose uh, their minds when I'm like, I like Hail Caesar. I adore that movie, but I, I guess if it's I got ha- some phenomenal scenes. Yeah, oh, man, the Channing Tatum thing, the the but it uh, was simple. Oh man, and just watching like Scarlett Johansson's accent, man, she's hilarious in that. I guess I think I, I, as a as a whole piece, I don't think it fits together terribly well. But as individual segments, it's great. Like, no, you're right. I like that the writers <laughs> want to be communists, Jay. <laughs> it is fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I mean, I've only seen it once, but I think I'm going to guess a lot of people that reviewed it have also only seen it once. And it's just, it's not the film that was advertised. And I think if I, if I, if I went back to it, knowing what it is now, I'd probably appreciate it more, is my guess. No, I mean, because there really is, ex- there are expectations that come with watching a Coen Brother movie. So you watch Hail Caesar, and it's, it is a collection of scenes. And it it's just super not what you'd expect. I could see how that would turn people off. I guess I was just yeah. charmed by the, the inside baseball filmmaking stuff. And I love being inside sets. So watching all that just made me so happy. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, I I think, was it, they did Buster Scruggs not long after that. Oh, so good. Which they kind of learned, like, okay, instead of doing one kind of plot that's a bunch of little ones woven together, let's just do six separate plots. Let's just do six, and, and that worked better. Whoa. So it's, it's a, my take. Jay. <laughs> I just came up with that. That's really good, man. I love Tim Blake Nelson in that. He's so fun. Oh, he's so good. I, lo- I adore and, that movie. And Tom Waits. The only problem with that movie, you just know the worst thing's going to happen. So it yeah. takes out a lot of the... Uh, uh, event. By the third one, I'm like, oh, this is going to end bad. But I, I think it was still my number one or two movie of that year. Uh, did, you, did you ever watch the TV series Inside Number Nine? No. Uh, it's Reese Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton, uh, two of the guys from the League of Gentlemen, uh, who like a British comedy. It's basically it's a British anthology dark comedy series where it's different characters, different setting every week. But Steve Pemberton and Mark Gattis, no, and and Reese Shearsmith are all, and Mark Gattis sometimes in it. Uh, they're always in it, and it's basically. Whatever is the worst thing you can imagine is going to happen to all of these characters. I'd say about half of the episodes end with everyone dying. Oh, uh, so but I, it's a show I really like. Send and, that to like, me. I want to watch that. So many British people are in it. There are like six or seven seasons now, and it, like, it's cool. Every episode takes place in like number nine of something, so it's inside number nine. So there's one that takes place at a, a football stadium, changing room nine, with all the referees and the mascots and stuff. One of them is in uh, just house number nine or uh, police car number nine. So it's just it's a very free form uh, theme for a show, but yeah, it's 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 fun uh, oh, and I it's watch this. very bleak at times, but I really like it. And loads of famous people are in it. Lo- lo- they get some of the best British and non-British actors in there. I love uh, bleak stuff, Jay. <laughs> and you like this? No. Super. All right. Uh, before we go, can I recommend five movies that aren't typically per- said? Like people don't typically like think our cage is best they don't come up in the conversation but i still think they feature him doing really well please do yeah all right so first and foremost uh, uh, like mandy people adore it oh crap i didn't put joe in there oh joe's gotta go in there what do i have to take out i mean we could you could take out connor and put joe in because we're dedicating a podcast all right to yeah yeah connor has gone yeah. joe uh but i think mandy he's great in he they don't exploit exploit him and i think he's wonderful in it i also you know watching some of these movies like running with the devil uh, he plays just this guy called the chef and i feel like he's just kind of a really laid back cage really dangerous and so i would say he's pretty good in that i love him in willie's wonderland largely like no dialogue but he is just amazing in it he makes me so happy to watch in that movie uh, so those two some of these man watching some of these jay um <laughs> oh gosh like i don't know if you're gonna be positive or negative i'm a huge fan know. of his but i think he needs a david gordon green and like in his later phase he's needed a uh 
like a Oliver Stone for Snowden or a uh, Panos Cosmatos for Mandy. He's needed a David Gordon Green for Joe. He's needed really right. strong presence like on Pig, that director. I think that's when he's at his best. But when he does movies like Jiu-Jitsu or Grand Isle or Kill Chain or Primal, um, that's when – that's the like – there's a board cage. And he's not bored. Yeah. But – it's not – it's 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 a really odd cage, man. I don't know if – I can't say he's ever phoned a movie in, but I think sometimes he knows what movie he's in. Uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to Renfield. Oh, that's going to be great. With him as Dracula. Yeah, because that's, that's Chris McKay. So uh, Tomorrow War and Lego Batman movie. <laughs> he directed. Oh, oh so, yeah, I can't wait. To, and, yeah, he – I mean, I think – I love Tomorrow War. Norbert and I just talked about it, so – uh, nice. But also, um, Drive Angry, I think, is a better movie than I remembered. It's very grimy. It's crazy grimy. So that one, I think he's really good in Kick-Ass. And then if yeah, I had he's to great add, in Kick-Ass. He's Seeking just... Justice is probably the next one. Sorry, Jay. Jumped on you. I was saying, I was saying he's, he's great in Kick-Ass. He's like Adam Westing everywhere. Oh, yeah. He's so he's, good. Yeah. But he hasn't gone anywhere. In Unbearable Way to Massive Talent, he's like, I haven't gone anywhere. And it's true. And we've been saying that for years. So. Yeah, he has always been acting. It's just no one's been seeing the films. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> You're full of good stuff tonight, Jay. <laughs> uh, it's, oh, it's, yeah. Uh, midweek sagisms. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so now um, I'm just very tired, but I've watched all the Cage films, and I've discovered <laughs> You can that finally sleep. His, the movies that feature – like so if there's a movie that features him wearing a suit and a sleeve of shirt, they're in both categories. But if the, if the movie just features him wearing – like not just – but if a movie, one of his movies features him in a sleeveless T-shirt, those are the highest rated, according to IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. Critics and audiences have those, on average, being the highest. And those movies that make the most money are leather jacket movies, which is fun. But he's only been nom- but the movies he's been nominated for for Academy Awards, he hasn't worn a sleeveless shirt. But he has died. Yep. One of yeah. uh, Cage dies, and he's a writer. <laughs> So the the next time he's playing a writer, we need to keep an eye out because he's he's on the Oscar path again. Last question. If Nick Cage somehow wore a suit in Pig, does he get nominated for an Oscar? I I think he'd have to die at the end. (laughs) Yes. So he shows back up. He cleans up. He gets back into the world and then he gets killed. And the pig. Then he gets killed. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's a real change of pace where there's like a, a running with the pigs. Uh, kind of thing with just a uh, a whole herd of pigs lets loose on on a street and he's running with them and he gets trampled and gored and that's how he gets taken out. Death. Oscar's wow. all over the place. So he would have the second one on his mantle. Yeah. At his... least at least they might give him twenty. Oh. <laughs> we just got him a second Oscar for Pig Two. Pig Two, still pigging. And this one I'm dead, too. <laughs> I don't know. Ghost Rider. Pig Two. Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Ghost Rider Three, Spirit of the Pig, Pork, Spirit, uh, Spirit of the Pork, Spirit of the Pork, hamming it up. <laughs> there it is. Oh, what you say? Well, thank you, Jay, for for joining me. This was good. Always happy to talk Nick Cage, uh, whatever clothing he's wearing. Oh, yeah. So we got a lot more chapters of Con Air. We got a lot more stuff to cover on MFF. We still have to do Twister, dude. We still have to do Twister, <laughs> dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> At some point, we will. <laughs> All right. So for me, Mark Hoffmeyer, for Jake Lewitt. And me, Jake Lewitt. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait. <laughs> sorry. Oh, wait. I don't know which one we're doing. Okay. We'll do MFF, and then we'll do it. Okay. So for me, Mark Hoffmeyer, for Jake Lewitt, this is Movie Sons of Flicks. We'll see you next week. So for me, Mark Hoffmeyer. And me, Jake Lewitt. This is Con Air, the podcast. Wait. Because what... well, is this just going to be dropping like as a bonus episode? Yeah. Okay, then we should we'll just do we'll just do sayonara, I guess. All right, yeah. I'll I'll do it again. Okay. All right, so for me, Mark Hoffmeyer, and me, Jay Clue. This is Connie the podcast. Sayonara. There we go. We're very clumsy. Yep. <laughs> All right, dude. Thank you. I gotta go no hang worries. out with Mandy. Or Ma- not Mandy. I was just looking at Mallory. <laughs> and I can name my daughter Mandy. And I'll edit all this and get it up. Cool. Thank you. Um. So.